In this lesson, I'll show you how to play the classic finger picking song, Don't Think Twice, It's All Right by Bob Dylan. It's played at warp speed, but it has a few repetitive picking patterns that make it a really good stretch piece for aspiring finger pickers. Big thanks to Black Mountain Picks for sponsoring these song tutorial lessons, including this one. And you know, if you've struggled to find a thumb pick that fits well and feels comfortable, even for long picking sessions like I know I did, then you really owe it to yourself to try out the Black Mountain Thumb Pick. It's got a self-adjusting design that helps it stay firmly in place, but it's not wrapped on so tight that it turns your thumb blue after long picking sessions. It's also a great pick to start your thumb picking journey with because of the familiar flat pick shape. If you're a beginner at thumb picking, just put this on and then just get used to playing your favorite strummers while wearing this. A great way to kind of get in the game. And for more advanced pickers, you'll find it nice to be able to grab onto this and play fast picked runs just like you would with a flat pick. Cole and the team at Black Mountain Picks offer different pick gauges and shapes so that you can find what you're looking for. This is perfect for me. It mimics my favorite flat pick design, the jazz shape. And if you're a left-handed player, by the way, they got you covered there too. Not always easy to find. Plus, they recently launched a cool slide ring with a novel design. You can check out Black Mountain Picks at the link in the description. For Don't Think Twice, It's All Right, I'm in standard tuning, but I've got a capo at the fourth fret. So we're gonna refer to everything from fret numbers to chord shapes relative to the capo, as if it's the new nut. Now, this song is fast, and I mean fast, which makes it a bit of a challenge. It's in 2-4 time, so each measure gets just two beats, but the tempo is 110 beats per minute. Like I said, it's fast. So my advice to you is to not try to tackle this at full speed right from the start. I didn't. I learned this song at about 70% of full tempo and then gradually increased the speed until it was at 100%. So take that to heart. We're gonna cover the intro and the first verse in this tutorial. Now, there are many subtle variations in the picking that happen in the subsequent verses, but we're gonna focus on the first one as kind of a template for the others. And I've included timestamps in this tutorial so you can work on this over time and come back to the section that you need to work on. I hope that helps you put this in your repertoire. We got a lot to dive into, so let's get started by having a look at the intro. This intro gives us a lot of the core elements of the entire arrangement from the chords that we'll use to the picking. And yes, we're going to introduce new picking patterns and new chord shapes as we move along, but there is a lot of the meat of the song packed right here in the intro. The chords that we'll need are this C over G. And now, yes, I know this is not pitched to a C, but we're gonna call it a C because we've got the shape intact because of the capo being at the fourth fret. So even though this is sounding an E, it's looking a lot like a C. And it's a C over G because we're bringing in this lower G. So we have a C, if I get my finger out of the way, you can see that's just a regular C major shape over G or what would be a G if we played this in the open position. Again, we're referring to everything relative to the capo, okay? So that's the first chord we'll need. Then we use a G7, then an A minor, and then an F. And I'm gonna fret my F this way where I just play the triad, fourth, third, and second strings here, and then bring my thumb over to play the first fret. You could play it this way if that's more comfortable to you. Then we'll play the G, or C over G again, the G7, and finally we'll wrap up with two measures of our C over G. Now, let's have a look at the picking. The bass picking changes depending on what chord we're over. For our first measure, it's a five, four, six, four. Then we switch to six, four, six, four. Then for our A measure, it's five, four, six, four. We're gonna talk about that when we get to the fretboard piece of this because we do move a little bit in the bass. And then we go back to an F with six, four, six, four. Then our C, G, six, four, six, four, G, seven, six, four, six, four, C, G. And here, the last couple of measures, we go six, four, five, four, which is a little bit backwards, right? We're a little more used to the five, four, six, four, but six, four, five, four, and then six, four, six, four, okay? Now the picking on top here. We're gonna play our bass and we're gonna count one, 
and two e and a. Okay, for that two e and a, that move comes up a lot in this tune. So let's take a look at that. First up, it was just the bass, one and two e. For the e of two, I'm picking the open third string, right? So just hold the chord and just think strings right now, okay? So two e and, that's the bass, uh, that's the second string. So just sit with that a minute, that little picking pattern, and let's do it over and over. We're going through it really slowly here, but when you get it fast, you get something closer to what you hear in the tune. And we're going to use little variations of that pattern throughout this entire arrangement. Okay. So then we move on to our G7, and we already know the bass line there. It's 6464. Six, so here's the picking that goes on top of that. One E and uh, two E and uh. All right, so we got that really cool hammer on, which can be tricky. We start out with our picking pattern, just kind of spread to the bass being six four. So one E and uh. And we go all the way up to the first string for the high note there. And that first string is open. Then we come down to give us the real G7 sound as we start the um, pattern to the and uh, here we move back so so we hammered up on the first string but for that last 16th note we got to come back we got to move that index finger to the first fret of the second string there listen to these two measures one and two e and a one e and a two e and a so that hammer on has to fall with the bass. We're gonna see that a few more times throughout this tune. So make sure that you get that really solid and then it comes down in time. We gotta get that hammer to fall right in place. All right, next measure. We've got kind of a little miniature uh, pattern here. We just go one E and, we don't do the uh there. One E and, two E and. Uh. So here we move, we kind of are still thinking about A minor and then we just move to get this G in the bass, right? On the third string, sorry, third fret of the sixth string. So one E and two E and uh, pick up and play the open second string because we're gonna hammer into our F position here. Right? Very similar to what we did over the G7 when we hit the beat with the bass. We want to come down and hear that first fret, second string, right? With the chord, right? So you'll want to put everything down right in place. So picking pattern there. And then here's a little trick in the intro. We can hammer up from the open sixth string to the first fret sixth string um, with the bass. So that's a neat little move. We'll hear it in, in action in just a second, but we finish that picking pattern with this. We go to the third string, then bass, then open second string, because we're gonna do another hammer on to that same note as we change chords. All right, but let's listen to the uh, the first four bars here and listen to where we place that hammer on. If you can do it, great. If not, just maybe work to it, right? You're not gonna lose the song if you can't get that. All right, so here we've got picking patterns. We're going to hammer in, and then we're at a 6-4-6-4 six, four, six, four bass. Here we go all the way up to the first string. And then back to our normal pattern, which is just 6-3-4-2, but I picked up. I wanna be up off of the second string there as I change into this measure that we've done before over G7. And then finally, two measures with our C over G. And again, this measure is the one that it trips me up because you normally think about this position as a five, four, six, four alternating bass pattern, but it's kind of reversed. It actually starts out 
with a 6-4 pattern. And then from there, it's just the picking pattern that we've picked up already. So one E and a two and. Then we do that again, but this time 6-4, six, 6-4 four, six, four bass picking, all right? Hope you're tracking with me. One E and a two and. Hopefully you'll spend some time really dialing in the intro because in a lot of ways the verse is the intro just kind of stretched out and yeah there are some different chords but we'll get to that in the second part of the verse tutorial. We start out the exact same as the intro. Now when we get to this A minor part, go ahead and fret your A minor and again I know this is not an A minor, that would be down here, but with the capo we're just referencing it as a shape more than its pitch here just to help us move along through the tutorial. So our bass remember is 5-4 when we're over our A minor. So we're going to play the bass and then pinch with the second string. In the intro we did this, right? We played in between the bass notes here, we're just playing nothing and then pinch. And we're going to hang through beat two with our A minor and bring on our picking pattern. So two E and up, right? It's bass, third string, bass, first string, bass doing the five, four move, right? So here's the A minor. Then we start out again uh, on A minor for the next measure. This is the measure where we do this move where we kind of put that that G in the base of our A minor so we kind of have an A minor 7 over G here you could think of it in a couple different ways but I'm thinking about it that way because I'm holding this A minor and just putting that G in the base so A minor we've got one and two E and a one and two E and a and notice that we do that same hammer up to our F like we did before. Let's take a look at what we do over the F measures. We hammer in and then we settle into the picking pattern where we've got bass, third string, bass, second string. And now our bass is going six, four, six, four throughout two measures over the F chord here. So we really settle in. That was one measure. Here it is again. Ah, but we change something right here at the end of the second measure over F. We start out as if we're going to continue our picking pattern, but we got a little curveball. We're going to do a hammer on up from the open third string. So pick up your middle finger, and then when you come down, it's bass time. All right. So we've got one E and a two E and a one E and a two E and. All right, let's look at that second measure over F a little more closely. One E and, right? And this is where we would go to the second string here, but instead we're going to the third string for an open note as we hammer and fall right with the B. You're noticing that coming up quite a lot here. One E and a two E and. All right. And that and was just the bass note. So the F. Then we switch to our C over G and we're going six, four, nothing else happening. And then six, uh, four bass again, but we're gonna weave in our picking pattern. And I'm going to pick up off of the second string to do this. And we're headed into a G7 measure, which we've done before. Before another C, G measure, which we've done before. That's basically our picking pattern, but with a 5-4, 6-4 bass line. Back to G7 again. All right, and then another measure over A minor, but here we don't pinch like we did earlier in the verse. We're going to go 
go bass, second string, bass, five, four, bass. Then we've got our pattern. Then we've got our A minor with this sort of, you can think of this again, a few different ways. You can think of it as an uh, A minor over G. You could even think about it as just going back to our C over G. We're just missing a finger either way you look at it there. The rest of verse two is really built on the back of a very repetitive picking pattern, but it doesn't feel super repetitive because we're moving through some really cool chord choices. First up, we move to a D7 over F sharp. Now really just need string six, three, and two here. So I'm kind of just fretting a little bit of this, right? I can put my little finger down on the first string, second fret, if I feel comfortable doing that. And you can certainly fret this however you're comfortable fretting it. But I like this because it feels really good to go from this chord shape, which comes right before this, which is a C over G to this D7 shape. Now, keep in mind that this is really not pitched a D7. I realize that we're referencing the shape more than anything because we got a capo on the fourth fret. Just helps us talk about things here. So we're coming from that C over G and we're dropping down into our D7 over F sharp, however you choose to do it. And what we've got is a quick little one E and. So when I say quick, we're tossing that third string in on the E, one E and. But then we, we let that and kind of make a statement. It's really cool to do here because in a minute, we're not going to leave any space right there. But right now we are. One E and, two E and, uh. And we do that again. One E and, two E and, uh. And what we did there for the two E and, uh, that picking pattern, six, three, four, two, is what we're gonna carry with us throughout a whole bunch of measures here, right? So this kind of starts it off and we're gonna change chords here to G. So I'm gonna move and just fret the sixth string, third fret above the capo, and then everything else is open for the first half of this measure. Same picking pattern. We're gonna really keep that dialed in here. One E and uh. All right, same picking pattern. It was six, three, four, two. And we do it again, but we put down the middle finger on the fourth string, second fret. They give us kind of a G6 sound, one E and uh. Actually, that was two E and uh. And then we move to the next measure and move that fourth string note up a half step to the third fret so that we get a G7 sound. And we do that twice. So that's the full measure there, G7. Check this out. somewhere we've been before, this C over G. With that picking pattern, let's do that for two full measures, so four times. Then we change, this is one of my favorite parts, we change to a C7. Same picking pattern, the only difference is, of course, we've moved our bass picking to the fifth string, fourth string here, right? Instead of having it spread over six and four. Now that we've moved to, to our C7, we're settling into this little slight alteration of the picking pattern. At the end of that measure, we hammer into this F where we've been before, and then we go back to our 6-4 based picking pattern. For two full measures, 
Then we move down to a D7 over F sharp, moving as little as possible on the fretboard. Picking pattern there, once more. But here, we sneak this really cool move in where we hammer up that 16th beat, the last 16th beat of uh, beat one, and fall down on the hammer, the first fret, as we go to the bass, right? And then continue the picking pattern. I end by bringing that index finger back to the second string. Let's take a look. 2E and a 1E and a 2E. All right, then we're back to where we've done before. One E and a two E and a, that's the C over G. And then we go to a G7. One E and a two E and a. We've done that before. Our A minor. Notice we're kind of keeping that picking pattern going here. Just move to the fifth string, fourth string bass here. Now we're gonna throw that G in the bass and pick up. So we're doing a little bit something with the melody here by picking up off the first string because we're going back to an F. We like to hammer into that. As we move through F and then do our little hammer on move to get us to the C over G. But then here we start to really bring the melody home. So listen to what's happening on the second string. We play that open second string in the melody a couple of times through our C over G before coming back to the C note on the first fret second string. Then we got a couple of easy measures, which is just the alternating bass and then our pattern spread out from sixth string, fourth string bass. If you learned something from this lesson, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you want to learn fingerstyle guitar with a proven roadmap that's helping BGI members right now, click the link right over here to join my BGI and I'll see you inside. Until then, practice smart and play on.